What's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. This is Darian with Darian the Dev and in this video we're going to be explaining the main roles in tech. I just got this yesterday. I was super excited to put it up and like use it for videos and stuff. Hopefully it helps me like flesh out my ideas some more and help save me some editing time and just switch up the angles for me always being at the desk. So today, if you guys can read this right now, I promise I'll be writing bigger. But we're going to be talking about tech roles explained or the main roles in tech. And I just want to break it down a little bit so you guys can get a better understanding of all the different options and the different roles that make up a team when you're working in a scrum environment at a company. If you guys are brand new to the channel, if you're in the tech, entrepreneurship, coding, startups, anything like that, make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe. It really helps me stay motivated to put this content out for you guys. All right, let's jump right into it. So the very first role that I want to talk about is going to be a scrum master and the reason why i want to bring up scrum masters is because they're a super important part of the team but they don't necessarily have to be super technical people or even developers by a long shot so a scrum master has a few different responsibilities so one is going to be velocity so a scrum master is going to determine what everybody's capacity is on the team so whether that's understanding that this person is a junior developer and they're not gonna be able to knock out three or four user stories in one sprint. I might only expect them to have all their capacity dedicated to maybe two user stories or something versus a senior developer that I know if I need to pull in more features from the business or something like that, I can always rely on my senior developer to be able to do, you know, his full capacity, maybe even more, and still deliver it on time. And so she can then allocate that into your, your planning sessions and things like that, which we'll get into in a second. But basically, you know, the Scrum Master is going to have to know the team, their skills, their strengths, and know how to plan the sprints and how much work goes into each sprint so that the team can constantly move forward. If you're a people person and you like doing a lot of organizational and planning stuff, um, this would be a great role for you, right? So um, so that also goes to, that's another thing they do is planning. So with planning, you could have things like a sprint planning. You could have a retro or like a review. So the Scrum Master a lot of times is responsible for facilitating these meetings where you guys will go through, you know, how much work you can dedicate, like I said, individually, each developer or each person on the team, the QAs, you know, what is everybody's capacity for that sprint? How long are things going to take? You know, this could come into story pointing. So getting into asking the team how much or how difficult they think that a certain task or a certain user story is going to be. And then you give it a point system and things like that. And all this happens in planning. And this is all being facilitated by the Scrum Master. So again, they're really good with communication. So I'll put that down here. Because again, they have to, they have to be in touch with everybody on the team, the developers and the QAs and the BAs, but they also have to be in touch with the business as well too. And so there's, there's usually a lot of, back and forth between the scrum master kind of doing dual responsibilities they're kind of doing tech stuff but they're also talking to the business and doing that and again they're like the heart of the team so another thing they do is they remove roadblocks so um so we'll say remove roadblocks so sometimes there needs to be meetings that have to happen with the business or people that you might not be familiar with as a technical person. And the scrum master is basically the person that you would go to talk to and explain the issue that you're having with stopping you from being able to develop what you need to develop. And then they would then help you remove that roadblock, get you the resources you need, and then be able to help you keep going. So the second role that we're gonna talk about in tech is gonna be a tech or a team lead. And again, this could change based on the title could be different based on what company you're at and things like that. But essentially, this person is going to be very technical. All right, so we're gonna say we're gonna say a senior a senior developer, you know, plus. So they're a senior developer plus more. So they're a really there could be an architect or 
you know, a really good release or DevOps person. So team leads are going to be very, very technical people. They often are very good at coding and they are, they have a lot of experience professionally. The growth of the team. All right. So one of the things is that because they're so good at what they do and they've had so many years of experience, they're going to be relied on a lot because they obviously know a lot more about the systems themselves a lot of the times. And they know, again, kind of like the Scrum Master, a lot of the strengths and weaknesses with the, everybody on the team because they spend a lot of time with all the members of the team usually. And again, their job is always going to be to, you know, help improve the team in some sort of way. This person is going to be very knowledgeable. Knowledgeable of the business. And the reason why that's important is because as software developers, a lot of times, you know, it's one thing to be really good with this stuff, right? The technical stuff, but knowing your industry, knowing your competitive advantage in the market, knowing your pricing and how and what makes you competitive, knowing what other companies are doing or what's happen happening in the industry, the industry trends, all this good stuff, makes you all the more valuable on top of being a senior developer or having senior level development skills or technical skills knowledge or really advanced knowledge of the business is usually a trait that you're going to find in the people who are leads because they're doing a lot of business stuff on top of doing the technical stuff right they're part of their job is to help grow their team and help their team become better and better and more efficient speed up their velocity and then they also have a lot of high knowledge of the business so Code reviews kind of embody all those things, right? Helping people get better writing their code, having uh, a better knowledge of the business. So knowing what to expect from certain situations, scenarios, one-offs, um, edge cases, they know a lot of those things before it ever comes up. So this in a nutshell, I would say is a, is a pretty good outlook of what a team lead does in general. You will see again, these are just the high level elements of what these roles do, but they could be, they can have a ton more responsibilities. I promise you that they often will have a ton more of what we listed here, but this is just the, I guess, distinctive traits of each role. All right, the next one we're gonna talk about guys is gonna be the QA role or the quality analyst role or quality assurance. And so this person is going to be responsible for all things related to testing. Okay, Postman. You know, possibly things like JMeter, SQL a lot of the times, or some sort of database. Um, so I'll just put databases in general. Um, they're also going to be familiar with things like APIs or code in general. So they're very technical people for the most part, or at least they're very comfortable in a technical setting. You know, they might even have to do something like um, front end testing. And the reason why I'm mentioning front-end testing separate from testing is because if they're doing uh, front-end testing, they could have to write code as well. So that in that case, they're almost basically like a developer as well. And they're gonna write test cases. So of course this could change based on what company you're at and how things go. But for the most part, they're gonna be writing test cases, coming up with test cases and yeah, they're gonna they're gonna have a really good working knowledge of the system, the business, and the technical side as well. And they're gonna be doing using a lot of different tools, as you guys can see, to basically test your entire application and make sure that everything is good before it gets released. So next up is developers, of course, can't leave us out, right? So the first thing on the agenda is going to be to produce working software. The reason why this one is so big is because that's the main job of us as developers is to pr produce working software. And the key word here is going to be working, okay? Working based on the business requirements, what is asked of us or whatever, despite how, whatever the requirements are asked is, right? You should be meeting the needs of the business. So working, not breaking software is going to be the overall objective of developers now obviously there's a ton of other things that go into that as well right so of course we all know that we could be front end or a back end developer 
So we know we got front end, back end. Um, a lot of times you could be um, familiar with databases as well. So I'm gonna put networking and servers on here as well because when it comes to deployments, when it comes to deployments and just development in general, like when you're making uh, HTTP requests, networking and servers are gonna be an important thing that you need to know. So, you know, I'm just gonna put that on there because it's an essential thing. You know, you might you might have to be very versatile. Very versatile. Um, and that, you know, in terms, this could be in terms of like languages, how many languages you know, your ability to learn new things on the fly, and, you know, based on a, on a project need or being able to drop what you're doing for a second and work on something totally different, switch over and be efficient. So you got to be versatile. You have to be able to adapt on the fly a lot. Um, you're going to be doing solution designs as well. So you're definitely going to be documenting the code that you write and helping maintain it for other people. So solution design documents are going to be really, really important so that you can share knowledge with other people. Um, hmm, let me see. Um, so I'll put DevOps here. I'll put DevOps slash deployments because I think this is one that gets slept on the most and not talked about the most, especially if you're going to a coding bootcamp. Like you don't really learn much about DevOps or deployments and that's gonna be a key and crucial thing, especially if you wanna be a freelancer. You're gonna to have to know how to deploy your software and deploy it under different circumstances for different clients and for different client needs. And you're gonna to have to know how to architect a efficient DevOps solution to be able to make that, that deployment possible. So this is something that I feel like boot camps don't really talk about very much. And it's something that I feel like we just, we always worry about coding, 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 coding. But I think that DevOps and deployments is a really huge, huge, important skill that developers really should have. But again, this is all going to change and be different and flexible based on where you are, what states you're in, what country you're in, what company you're in, your role could be more or less of all this stuff. But I just want to give you guys some high level ideas of some of the some of the things that obviously go into it. Next up is going to be the business analyst. Um, and the reason why I think the business analyst is important is because they're kind of like a scrum master in the sense that they're a big glue to the software development lifecycle process because they are the ones that basically translate a lot of the stuff to you as a, as a technical person and you might not understand the industry that you're in as much as somebody who's worked in the industry for like 15 to 20 years. So they have, they have tons of industry experience. Another big responsibility of the business analyst would be to answer tech questions. Because again, like I said, they know a lot more about the business usually than the developers and the QAs um, do. So you're gonna go to them a lot and rely on them a lot to help you kind of understand certain things, how certain things need to be coded. You need to be able to talk to them about, you know, just a lot of different scenarios, guys. I can't really say 100% for certain because I don't know what industry you guys are gonna be working in, but you're gonna be working very closely with somebody who's a business person or point person that you can direct your questions to, or just get a better understanding or explanation about how the business works, how certain things already are and what you're trying to do, what you're trying to change. So you're gonna rely a lot on this person. Sometimes the, the business analyst will also have to know something like SQL or a database um, because they'll also be doing something like reporting. And they usually have a lot of meetings with the business. And that's because, again, they're understanding what it is the business expects from you guys as the developers or as the rest of the tech team. And they're, they're trying to, you know, ensure that you as a team are delivering the proper business value that the business is looking for. So they're almost like, I would say, a, a translator in a sense. Um, between the business and the technical people. So another thing I'll say about the business analysts is they're usually involved in the planning process to some degree. So depending on where you are, 
you know, this may be more, they may be more or less involved in the actual planning that we talked about before. But again, they're usually gonna have a say in it because if you have questions or if they need to explain something to the team or if they, they need to just, you know, provide some industry knowledge sharing type stuff, um, they usually are gonna be a part of your planning in, in one way or another. So this is a pretty good general overview, I would say, of a business analyst. Um, they're usually a pretty good medium between technical and non-technical. So I wouldn't say they're so technical as that they would be able to code, but they're usually, again, familiar with APIs, and so I'll, so I'll put that down as well. So I'll put, I'll put that they are technical. Okay, meaning that they're gonna know something about APIs, they're gonna know databases, they're gonna know about software development, the life cycle, the sprints, they're gonna know about user stories, they're gonna know about pretty much most of the computer science jargon and the, the coding jargon, and they'll be able to articulate to you some of the things that might be required from you as a developer, from a QA, from a testing perspective, how you can do certain things. They know about data. So if you need to get like sample data, mock data, things like that, they usually know where they can either get that information or how they can get it to you and things like that. Um, yeah, and I would say too, um, I'll say they also clear roadblocks. So very similar, very similar to um, the Scrum Master in that sense, where if you have a business roadblock where you need to get in touch with somebody specific that maybe you as a as a member of the tech team you don't have access to certain people as much as a business analyst might because they have all these meetings then they will be a part of helping you clear that roadblock as well so um so yeah guys these are just like i think four as how many we just did like four roles but i just wanted to share with you guys some of the different responsibilities and expectations and stuff that come with different roles in tech because not everybody that goes through a coding boot camp is going to end up being a software developer but that doesn't mean that you won't get a job in tech and that doesn't mean that you won't also be able to get a good job in utilize a lot of valuable skills. Communication skills, as you see, overlaps with a lot of this stuff. Reporting, databases, and the ability to research and you know be able to do things, clear roadblocks for other people in the team. There's a lot of other roles. Like if you're going through a coding bootcamp or you're getting ready to go to coding bootcamp, if you're struggling with coding, or if you first get out of bootcamp and your first job is not as a software developer, just don't want you to beat yourself up and get down on yourself and things like that because there's a lot of other roles that are very well paid as well that get your foot in the door, get you exposed to all these different concepts in the technical world, get you working closer with developers, get you seeing the code and the SDLC process. And again, um, there's a lot of other ways to break into tech. So I just wanted to break this down a little bit for you guys and use my whiteboard. So yeah, I hope this was helpful guys. If it was, leave me some comments down below. Let me know what you think. Make sure you like the video if it was helpful because it really helps me stay motivated. And also, if you guys think about going to a coding bootcamp or if you're brand new to coding, check out the link in the description down below. I'm giving out my intro to coding bootcamp course. It's got everything I wish I knew going into coding bootcamp in there. And I'm giving it away completely for free. It just requires your email address. So make sure you guys check that out. There's also a link to the private Facebook group where I put all the free resources that I don't share in the descriptions of all these videos. So go over there and join the community of people who are getting better and improving. And again, guys, this is Darian with Darian the Deb. Subscribe if you haven't. And I'll see you guys in the next video, all right? Peace.